So we're going to start by doing a calibration of the sampling pump with our filter that we hope to use in sampling, or the same type of filter. So what I have set out here is some tubing, a uh, connector, I've got a sampling pump that will pull air through a sampling filter. I've got a flow calibrator. This one is works, it's a bubble meter, and it calibrates the airflow by um, measuring the time it takes an air bubble to rise through this tube, an air bubble that is moving with the airflow. I've got a filter that's a calibration filter. It's in a cassette, so you can see the white filter inside the cassette. The plastic cassette is clear. The inlet is here with the, with the blue cap, and then the outlet is here with the red cap. You can also tell the outlet has a pattern to it um, because uh, there's some air channels underneath the filter in order to make the air move um, rapidly out of the filter. And then there's a holder in which you can insert the filter, and this can then attach to a worker on their lapel or something like that to allow the, the sampler to be held there. All right, so the first thing we'll do is to put the filter into the holder, the calibration filter. So we'll take out the caps, first the blue cap from the inlet, and then the red cap from the outlet, and then we're going to place the calibration filter upside down into the holder. So um, the air will be drawn upwards through the filter in this case. So we're going to connect the tubing through this uh, connector to the outlet of the cassette. So this then is ready for uh, calibration. Um, next we'll look at the pump. And, and first thing we're going to do is we're going to cord the pump number. And we've labeled this so that we know what it is as pump number 5. So I'm going to record that in my lab notebook here. So next, I want to connect that uh, pump to the, the outlet of the filter holder with this tubing. So I'll connect the tubing to the outlet of the holder here. I want to make sure it slides on there so there's no air leakage. And then I'll connect that to the sampling pump, the inlet to the sampling pump right here. And next, I'm going to connect the inlet to the, the filter to the outlet of the calibrator. So I'm going to connect, put a, a, a tubing connector into the tubing. So it looks like that. I'm going to put that connector into the inlet of the filter and then connect that to the outlet of the calibrator. So now I'm going to turn on the pump it takes a little while to go through its warm up and then I'm going to um, see that the that the flow says 1.50 liters per minute and we're hoping that it'll be 2.50 liters per minute so I have to change that setting so I'm going to do that I got to get into a flow set I hit enter and then I can change this flow up or down. I'm going to change it to 2.50 liters per minute. And 
and I'm going to hit enter. And now I can try to calibrate it. And I'm going to stop that for now and go back to this uh, calibration in a minute because I have to set up the calibrator. So I need to turn this on and it goes through a little setup routine. And now it's ready to go. It'll give me um, the flow for an individual reading as well as an average and I can reset that average whenever I want. So what I'm going to do first off is to turn the pump on and see what it's reading. So the bubble is going up. Okay, it tells me that the flow is about 2.545 liters per minute. So it's reading higher than the setting, which means I have to lower the setting, um, not lower the setting, lower the calibration flow on the pump. So what I have to do is to go back into this flow set routine, um, accept that 2.50 liters, and that goes into a calibration setting routine. So what I want to do now is to make it go less than 2.545, so I have to hit a down arrow several times and then see what the reading is. So I'm letting a bubble go up. That's about 2.522. So I need to lower the, you know, lower the setting a little bit more. So I've lowered it some more. Let's see where we come out. So about 2.511. And that's certainly within 2% of our desired flow. So I'm going to accept that and say that we're in a good, good position with our calibration. So I'm going to hit the setting and then I'm going to turn on the pump. And I'm going to reset my average here. And take 10 readings to see if we are, are indeed an average uh, reading that's within 2% of our setting. The first reading is 2.486, so that's good. And then the last reading. Is 2.481. That gives me an average of 2.490 liters per minute for 10 readings. So I'm going to write that down as our initial flow calibration for this, this pump for our sampling. Now we're preparing the sampling filter uh, to be ready to hang on a worker. So we have our sampling filter and it has a code on it to identify the sample. So we're going to write that down. It's SAMP02 in this case. Now I want to insert this into uh, the cassette holder that I'm going to hang on the worker. So I'm going to remove just the outlet cap, the red cap on the back right now. So I'm removing that. I'm going to insert the filter again upside down into the holder and I'm going to place the connector inside the outlet to the filter. For now I'm keeping the cap on the inlet so there's no air that could leak into the cassette. Now my pump is still that pump number five, so I'm going to record that, make sure I know that, because I could be doing multiple samples. I want to make sure um, which pump is connected to which sample. So I'm going to write down that the pump for this sample is pump number five. So we should be ready to go now to attach this to a worker. All right, now we're ready to attach the sampler and the pump to the worker. So I'm going to 
uh, first attach the pump. Um, you could do it to the worker's belt, uh, perhaps over the pant line. It could go in a large pocket. So I'm going to attach that pump to, uh, to the worker's pocket here. And then I'm going to ask, ask the worker to turn around. And I'm going to attach the sampler to the lapel area of the worker. And then um, from there, I have to make sure that um, it doesn't twist too much. And it is a little twisty here. So I'm going to try to make sure that I attach it in a way that the worker um, is not uncomfortable. So I'm going to ask her to turn around again. I'm going to place some duct tape up here at the top to keep the tubing in place. So that's one way to keep tubing in place. Other ways include clips like these that I've attached to the tubing that I can connect to the worker's clothing and back to keep the tubing in place and to keep it out of the worker's way as they go about their jobs. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is to take the cap off the inlet to the filter. Then I need to put out a field blank and to do that I have to take the caps off the field blank. I need to record the field blank number, so I'm going to go cross over and do that. And I'm going to set that out near the sampler, or near where the worker is working, and I'm just going to put it off to her right over here. And then I'm ready to turn on the sampling pump, and I hit enter, and the pump's running. I'm also going to start the timer. And here I'm just using the timer on my phone. At the end of the sampling period, we stop the pump, and we make sure that we stop our timer too, so that we have the exact amount of time that we've run the, the sample. I'm going to collect the field blank and put the caps onto the field blank. So it'll be ready for analysis. And then I'm going to remove the tubing and the pump and the sampler from the worker. I'm going to pull the tube out of the, the outlet to the filter, remove the sampling filter from the holder, and then place the caps into the inlet and the outlet of the sampling filter. And so that's going to be ready to be sent for analysis also. So now we're going to do what many people call post-sampling calibration. The calibration we did before was pre-sampling. Now the, cal the, the measurements that we take now of the flow through the sampling pump are not really calibrations. We're going to just measure what the, the flow is at this point after sampling in order to compare it to what it was before sampling. And when we take the average of the pre-sampling calibration flows and the post-sampling measurements, and use that as our sampling flow for the entire run. So once again, we're going to go back and use our calibration filter and uh, attach that into our holder upside down after removing the caps. 
and attach the connector in here, setting it up the same way we did before. We saw the tubing attached to pump number five, and I'm going to attach that to the outlet of the cassette holder. And then I have tubing with a connector already in place that can attach to the inlet of the filter holder. And that tubing can also attach to the outlet of the bubble meter, the calibrator. So now I'm going to turn on the pump. So the first reading is 2.491, so pretty close to what it was before, almost exactly, exactly the same. And the last one is 2.461, so there was some discrepancy in some of the readings. But overall, the average was 2.481, which is still easily in the plus or minus 2% from our set reading, and not that far from our initial average of 2.490. So I'm going to record um, the post flow, post sampling flow, as being 2.481 liters per minute. And now we have all the data we need to send off a chain of custody form with our samples in order to uh, have them analyzed at an industrial hygiene laboratory. This slide shows a chain of custody form that was used for real samples that were sent to uh, a lab called EMSL Analytical. And each company that does analyses of samples has somewhat different chain of custody forms, but they, they are used in order to record the information, make sure the information that is needed for the samples to be analyzed uh, is communicated properly to the laboratory. And this accompanies and documents everything that the laboratory needs. So the upper section of the form includes the contact information, the, the contact person name, address, phone numbers, things like that. Uh, also the project name and, and the numbers of samples that are included on the chain of custody form and the date as well as how results should be provided. Uh, in this case, we asked for results by email, but they could also be faxed or sent via mail. Um, I should mention that this form was filled out as a fillable PDF. Um, it could be filled out by hand as well. Uh, in the next section, we requested a two-week turnaround time, and the cost of analysis depends on, on that turnaround. So quicker turnaround generally costs more. And then below that is the information on each individual sample. In this case, uh, we were analyzing filter cassettes. Uh, each, uh, in the first column, each of our samples has an ID that we provided for our internal use. And then the second column is the media. In this case, they were cassettes. They might also be a sorbent tube, for example, uh, if you're analyzing for gases or vapors. The third column has uh, the analyte that we're looking for or the, the method of analysis. And, and we use two different methods on these samples. One was referred to as respirable dust uh, using a NIOSH method, 0600. And that's a gravimetric method where you're weighing the filter sample. And then the second type of analysis was for endotoxins. Endotoxin is a, a toxin released as a bacterial cell disintegrates. Uh, in the next column is the volume of air sample taken from the pre and post sampling calibration uh, data and, and multiplied by the, the length of time that, that the air was sampled. Then there's a, a, a sample date and time uh, column, and then a location column. 
And this continues on to the next page. We had a lot of samples. And you'll notice that uh, a few of the samples are listed as field blanks here, in addition to having some samples where air was drawn through for uh, longer than eight hours in most cases. These sheets show the results sent by the laboratory via email for the um, respirable dust samples, the, the particle mass collected on the filters, not for the endotoxin samples. Um, the first column provides our sample number and then the location is provided in the next column. The volume of air in the third column and then the sample weight that the laboratory found in milligrams. In some cases there's less than a number which means it's below the limit of detection for the laboratory and that might be the case uh, as it is for the three field blanks we have in this group. Uh, they were all less than 0 0.05 milligrams. The next column is the concentration determined from the mass divided by the volume and then the reporting limit which uh, is the uh, amount below which they will not report a value because it's below their their limits of detection or quantification.